Following on from my last video where I showed this cheap reflow oven, I thought I'd just briefly show it running an actual production board. So these are very small boards, very simple, just a handful of components, but it will show the, the general principle and operation of the oven. Now when you get these boards you can of course apply the solder paste by hand uh, and then apply the, um, the components by hand. Now in this case I've used a, a stencil which I ordered with the boards and I placed the components by hand. It doesn't take very long, you do tend to need a microscope and you end up with a, a board that just needs reflowing and then it's finished. If you want to see how the stencil is used, then just uh, drop a, a comment and I'll show you how that's done. But I think there are plenty of videos out there already that show how to use a, a reflow stencil. Now, I've turned the oven off. Um, if you saw my last video, you know that the fan on this makes a horrible noise. I am unfortunately going to have to turn it back on. I have tried to quiet it down by putting a, a bit of cardboard ducting over the fan intake, but it's still quite noisy. Um, I have preheated the oven, so I've already run a, um, a cycle through it, so it is quite warm. Uh, it's always best to do that, principally because the first run when it's very cold, you'll find that the, the heat tends to go into the machine rather than into the boards. So I'll unfortunately now have to turn it on. So hopefully you can hear what I'm saying over this noise. We'll change the fan at some point, but uh, I just need to get around to doing that. So, first thing we need to do is select the cycle we want to use, and this is a slightly modified cycle that uh, I showed in the previous uh, video. So, we want wave 8. And then we want to put the board into the oven. So we'll take the board, and as I said before, we stand it on some inverted ICs, and that will just keep the, the board away from the metal base of the drawer. And that will allow the board to uh, properly reach the, the cycle temperature. If you don't do that, you'll find that bits of the board won't really flow properly. Uh, and then we can start the machine up. And as you can see, the heat has come on, and it will now cycle through this um, this process. Again, very simple. It just ramps up fairly quickly to 155 degrees centigrade, and then it stays at that temperature for a couple of minutes. Then it rapidly ramps up to the room flow temperature, and then it reasonably quickly cools down. And, and that, that's it. It takes about five minutes to run this particular cycle. So we'll come back once that has completed. Okay, so as you can see, we have finished the cycle. We're back down to around 60, 70 degrees. Uh, incidentally, don't just turn these ovens off when they're at high temperature because otherwise the heat uh, can make its way through to the electronics and, uh, and fry them. So make sure you do allow it to complete its cool down cycle before you switch the power off. Okay so we're cold enough now it hasn't quite got onto temperature but um, I'll switch it off and we'll have a look to see what the results are. So I'll turn the power off so you can hear me and then let's have a look to see what we did. Take the ball out and I will take a photograph and we'll have a closer look. Okay, so as you can see, the board is successfully reflowed. Um, it's a five minute process. The most time consuming part is placing the components by hand. Uh, in the next video, I'll show you how to set up the pick and place machine to make this same board. Uh, it's obviously much quicker. And also we can make them in the full size pallets rather than in just the single strips as I've done here.